Hey, how's it going out there, folks? Welcome back here to a Wednesday morning, 1057 local time here in the AM, California time, that is. January 22nd, 2025 is the date. Uh, latest activity here on the Earthquake 3D Globe shows uh, some movement out in the southeastern uh, Indian Ocean here. Got a 5.1 moderate size earthquake out there in the uh, Indian Ocean, little fracture boundary out here. Uh, still seeing some movement out across the Japan region overnight and this morning. Uh, got a little newer activity here with a 4.8 fairly shallow earthquake up here across the area of Tokyo. About four miles deep for this uh, 4.8, the latest in this region. Um, following that, uh, some earthquake activity up in Alaska. A little bit of movement down south in the Philippines area as well. Still watching this region specifically, the Nankai Trough area for some Further movement, and uh, when it moves, it's going to be a big earthquake. Uh, looking at uh, you know something potentially above 8.0, depending on how many fragments out here uh, tend to take place in that uh, that rupture. Uh, for California area, we're lighting up out here a little bit in the last hour. Got some earthquake activity on the San Andreas Fault here uh, in the red circles. A couple earthquakes here in the last hour. Uh, tend to be all following each other within a, about a minute or a couple minutes or so time period from each other. That means that things are on the move out here across the West Coast uh, when we get that plate boundary moving. And this specific earthquake right here is at the uh, kind of the bend zone just north of the Garlock Fault shear zone. This is where uh, they believe that the uh, well the southern branch here of the San Andreas Fault could produce the 8.1 that's been expected for you know many decades. It's well overdue in terms of the time uh, accumulation that has passed since our last full rupture down here. And a little bit of earthquake activity following that 1.3 here on the San Andreas Fault. A little further activity along the uh, Garlock Fault shear zone. So things are quite strained out here. Now these are not big earthquakes. These are very small, very small earthquakes below the 2.5 threshold, but they're still a good indicator of the um, the plate boundary on the move out here today. But uh, pretty close there to the region that we could see an unzip. As far as 2.5 and above, as you can see, there's not a whole lot there on the map. The majority, if not all of this here in Southern California is microquake activity, but it is still earthquake activity and it can point to uh, bigger things out here. So just be on guard. A little bit of movement down south here at the southern end of the San Jacinto Fault Zone near Borrego Springs. A couple of smaller earthquakes here uh, in the last hour within minutes of each other. Again, a good key indicator of things on the move across California. Um, up here across Nevada near the uh, Sheldon Contiguous Study Area. This used to be called the Sheldon National Antelope uh, Refuge. I was out here a few years back investigating a, a pretty good earthquake swarm. Nothing but dirt roads out here. And uh, it's interesting. A whole lot of desert out there in Nevada. But uh, a lot of um, obsidian lava flows up here. Obviously some older volcanic activity around the region. Uh, there's a little swarm kicking up here in the last 24 hours around that same area that uh, had a pretty decent swarm a number of years back. I think it was 2000, uh, 2015 or so, maybe 2016, uh, when the last big one was taking place. So this is just a little bit of earthquake activity. Nothing big uh, in terms of swarming out there for now. Uh, one earthquake well north of Mount Jasta, a little 1.8. Cascadia subduction zone sleeping for now. We'll check out Trimmer a little bit later on this evening. For the uh, Pacific Northwest, really nothing major going on here today. The Seattle Fault remains quiet after seeing uh, a little enhancement of earthquake activity here in the last week with uh, some 1s, 2s, uh, even a 3.5 out there shaking things up uh, towards the eastern edge here of the Seattle Fault Zone, which is capable of producing uh, some large earthquakes. And it's been... Uh, about a thousand or eleven hundred years since the last one struck out here, the big one. So a lot of worry, right? Uh, but uh, can't worry too much. Just got to be prepared and watch for uh, obvious signs of increasing activity out there, uh, which it has been. Yellowstone National Park, nothing going on there across the map, but I do want to double check and see what we have for Yellowstone. Make sure the earthquake 3D bells are off, which they are. Um, well, yeah, not, not really seeing a whole lot of anything out here. 
Earthquake activity uh, pretty much non-existent out here right now. Maybe over here around the promontory, a couple smaller quakes, but man, I'm having to look hard for some earthquake activity around Yellowstone. It's been awfully quiet there in terms of big, big scale earthquake swarming, which they have done in the past, but things pretty quiet up there for now. Uh, some movement across the oil fields there of Texas. The New Madrid Seismic Zone, quiet for now. Not a whole lot going on there. Eastern portion of the country, quiet as well. So Alaska region, a couple earthquakes up here across the Aleutian Trench uh, this morning, a 4.9 and a 3.8. That uh, is a little bit further west here along the plate boundary of our recent activity here in the last week. And that normally makes sense uh, due to the general plate movement up here, the Pacific Plate. A lot of strain builds up here. Uh, there's more um, plate stress as you go along the western edge here of the Aleutian Trench into the Kuril Kamchatka and the Japan area. And, of course, the Nankai Trough, which I'm watching right now for some movement. Uh, but it looks like, uh, you know, things are moving south and west here along that Aleutian Trench here in a migrational pattern. So we'll continue to watch that. might add some further... Well, I know it's adding further strain out here across this region, but it may stir up some larger activity uh, within the Aleutian Islands region. Continue to keep an eye on that. The rest of Alaska area, fairly minimal. Uh, just a couple ones and twos out there today. Uh, New Zealand, threes. A little bit of migration here overnight, following all the activity up north here along the Kermadec Trench. That's expected. Tends to make that uh, little migrational pattern across New Zealand after an elevated uptick up here in the last couple days. Nothing big, just some three stirring up out there, but it does have some potential for some larger activity. Uh, 4.6 coming in, uh, looks like oh, about 20 minutes ago. Pretty deep, 542 kilometers for that 4.6. That's gonna be right here on the USGS map. That's 337 miles here for a pretty deep earthquake into the Tonga Trench. So things starting to move out here. And um, this area up around the Japan region here, very, uh, I don't know, I get very suspicious that we could see some uh, larger activity out here soon just due to all the movement around it, the amount of strain that's been produced here, and uh, the lack of any big earthquake activity in some time. Over here across the Himalayas, eastern area, got a little movement there across India around this Complete tectonic bend area, some fours in there. Looks like even now, uh, do they have a five out there? Looks like just some fours out there around this region. Uh, nothing big going on there for now. Just uh, a little bit of elevated activity here in general across the region. The uh, Middle East area, seeing some threes and twos. Nothing big happening out there for now. No new further movement to note across the um, Ethiopia rift boundary for now. The Atlantic Ocean, pretty quiet. Not a whole lot stirring up. Same for South America. It's been awfully quiet down here. This is uh, very typical on any given day, twos, threes, and um, deeper activity there into the Peruchili Trench, but nothing big going on there across the area for now. Keep an eye here on the West Coast as we are seeing, you know, again, a little bit of elevated activity out here in the uh, along the San Andreas Fault. Um, Hawaii, the... Uh, Let's go check out Kilauea Volcano here real quick, see what we have. As far as I know, the eruption is still on pause up at the Kilauea Volcano. Turn that off real quick. Uh, let's check out the Summit Cam area. Yeah, still looks uh, like it's taking a break from the uh, eruption. Got uh, a little bit of smoke here. Volcanic gases there seeping up through the uh, the old crater area where we last seen our eruption but uh, that's about it there for Kilauea Volcano now over at uh, let's go back here to another Hawaii volcano they put out this statement here yesterday I forgot to cover it last night on this uh, seamount volcano underwater volcano here uh, formerly known as Lohi Seamount or Lohi Seamount this uh, I have to work on my pronunciation for that so I'm going to pass on that, but you guys can see it. Uh, this volcano here had a little bit of increasing earthquake activity here. Uh, and they put out a little update here on this volcano recently, yesterday. And uh, they state here, 
that uh, it entered a period of heightened seismic unrest around 2 a.m. Uh, yesterday morning, or Monday morning, excuse me, uh, January 21st. Is that right? Today's the 22nd, Wednesday. So I think that's, uh, that's wrong. That would be, uh, yeah, that's right. Excuse me. No, no, no. What's going on here with this date? Monday would have been the uh, 20th. So uh, seismic activity ceased by 8 a.m. and a continuation of earthquake swarming activity at this time seems unlikely, but looks like there was a small little uptick. 16 total earthquakes identified in the swarm, all with magnitude zero and smaller. That's interesting. So these are very small earthquakes, uh, but, uh, but enough to uh, make the USGS mention a little bit on this uh, little offshore swarming around that seamount so we'll continue to watch that obviously that's going to be this area right here still listed as the lohi seamount or lohi Lo high seamount seamount uh, which uh, obviously will be breaching the surface of the ocean you know eventually down the road a lot of time you know, must pass before that happens but anyway so that's a little bit of newer information out there as far as space weather activity uh, got a number of sea flares here overnight. Really nothing big going on. In fact, uh, uh, kind of down there in the uh, lower sea flare category. Do have a number of sunspots out here that still harbor some potential for some, uh, some M flare. I don't think we got any X flare activity potential out here. I don't see anything that would uh, lead me to believe that. Uh, but this region right here may throw off a... Uh, some upper C flare, maybe a low grade M flare. Not so much for the rest of the sunspots out here. It looks pretty quiet. I'm not seeing any developing or any newer uh, sunspots that uh, harbor any complex sun, uh, sunspot uh, complexity. So 15% chance for X flare, M flare at 60, C flare around 99% chance. A slight chance here of aurora activity as we head towards the 24 time period. They're forecasting maybe up around the G2 class storm period, or G1, excuse me. Uh, so we'll see how that uh, plays out as we get a little bit closer there to uh, that time period. Uh, as far as any close approach asteroids out here, let's take a look real quick, see what we have on the asteroid list. If it's going to be working, I guess we'll see. It's taking a long time. Let's go back over here and try this again. For whatever reason, it's got a very slow connection speed there, so I'll have to check back on that a little bit later. As uh, far as any severe weather goes, not a whole lot happening out there in the forecast for now. As you can see on the uh, outlook, all that cold and snow venturing further offshore off the east coast. Behind that, uh, some still. A little bit of cold air dipping down here. Limited moisture, not a whole lot of snow uh, coming in. Got uh, a little low pressure system here across Southern California that may bring uh, this area a little bit of rain and some snow. It's actually trending a little bit more wetter with the most recent model run here for Southern California. So uh, they definitely need it. After that, uh, you know, I'd, I'm just not really seeing anything for... For California, that would tell me that uh, the storm door is going to be open. In fact, it uh, looks pretty quiet out there across California, aside from a little bit of uh, shower activity. And that's coming in, it looks like, uh, oh, towards the weekend. As far as any major fire starts out here, let's take a look here at uh, Southern California, see what we have going on out here. Got uh, the Palisades fire and Eaton fire pretty much contained a new fire up here called the uh, uh, Hughes fire it looks like 500 acres burning uh, quite nicely out there a lot of black smoke out there in the hills of Southern California that uh, looks like it's a big fire uh, no no containment there is some evacuation orders out here in the red uh, evacuation warnings here level two in the uh, kind of yellow color I don't know if there's any uh, Houses out here or not. Down south there is, obviously, near Sulphur Springs. But, uh, yeah, this kind of odd, right? Just starting out here on the road. A 
all burning out there into the uh, into this area that looks somewhat forested or vegetated somewhat. So that's kind of a newer one, newer fire. Hopefully they get a handle on that. Uh, I don't see anything else down here that's uh, of any major concern. Lower er, little earthquake activity, no, a little fire activity down there around San Diego uh, in the last couple of days, but it looks like that's pretty much contained. So we'll just uh, kind of see what happens out there. Hopefully they get a handle on that. Looks like uh, eight additional helicopters have been requested for some water droppage there on that fire that's burning called the Huges Fire in Southern California. All right, folks, I'm out of here. A uh, little earthquake activity on China Lake. That's uh, some very small earthquake activity, but earthquake activity nonetheless. So we'll keep an eye here on the West Coast as things are, uh, looks like they're on the move out here for now. Have a good one. We'll catch you guys back out here a little bit later.